Cincinnati has a rich history of fossils and amateur geologists who are interested in them. In the early 1900s, one native Cincinnatian, a railroad employee, and an avid fossil collector sold his collection to Yale University. He was hired as a curator there and eventually became a Yale geology professor. This is just one of many stories recounted by the Dry Dredgers, an association of amateur geologists dedicated to the knowledge and enjoyment of fossils here in Cincinnati. Hi, I'm Ann Thompson, and with me is Greg Courtney and his 12-year-old son, Keegan, of the Dry Dredgers. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. How did you guys get interested in collecting fossils? Well, I had, a, I had a high school teacher who made us go out and identify a lot of our uh, fossils. We had to go out and find Cincinnati fossils. We had to label them. And he had written a, bu uh, a book on fossils and shared that with the class. And his enthusiasm uh, rubbed off on me. And uh, it wasn't until I was adult that I started going out and seeking out trilobites. And then I heard about the dry dredgers and uh, joined them on some of their field trips, and I was hooked ever since. And of course, yeah. it would be natural that your son would be interested right. as well. Is this something that you like to do, or you do just because your dad does it? I like to do it. Just, yeah. All right. Like so is fun. this area a good place to find fossils? Yeah. It's not just a good place. It's the best, best place in the world for late or what's called upper or division age fossils. That's the average of these age of these rocks are 440 million years old. And we're finding some of the earliest, uh, not earliest, but very early sea life. Uh, Cincinnati was under the sea, under f about 50 feet of seawater. And we were also, the, the continental positions were different. We were under the sea and also under the equator. So geographically, we Cincinnati used to be much like the Bahamas. So it was home to these very very early invertebrates, so all kinds of seashells, snails, trilobites, and uh, the squid-like animals, the nautiloid cephalopods, we're finding their shells and their fossilized remains by the, by the tens of thousands. And it's hard in Cincinnati not to find a rock that isn't full of some type of fossil. And, and we'll have you show those in, yeah. in just a few minutes. But why have the fossils here been preserved so well? Because you said it was the best place right. in the world to find these. Well, they've been preserved very well in different places of the world, but this rock layer is exposed right underneath our topsoil. And the reason for that is Cincinnati is... We are, rest, we are resting, our city is resting right on top of a huge dome of rock layers. It's called the Cincinnati Arch. And it extends outward from Cincinnati in about 200 miles in all directions. And this very, it, what, it, what that has done is pushed up the rocks, and the younger layers have been bulldozed off, so to speak, by the glaciers. And that has exposed this wonderful uh, Ordovician Age rocks. Um, is so exquisitely are they it's so rich that the geologic period itself was almost named the Cincinnati period instead of the Ordovician period. Interesting. Let's take a look at some of the things that you brought here. And I'm sure you have your favorites, but what should we start with? Well, one of the most sought after of all fossils, the most desired by a fossil hunter is to go out and collect trilobites. That is without a doubt everybody's favorite. Um, second to that would be the crinoids. Uh, the trilobites, they are extinct arthropods. There's nothing quite like them alive today. The closest, uh, the closest comparison would be a uh, horseshoe crab. And there's uh, at least 22 different species we find here in Cincinnati. And this is one of the most common ones. It's called Flexicalamine miki, which is all the Latin. It looks like it, it lives in a shell or lived in it, a shell? It is, uh, again, it's, it's similar to a crab. Um, it is an extinct arthropod, so multi-segment. This is the outer shell, which we find fossilized. When it was alive, it had little antennas and little legs, but that we don't find fossilized very often at all, very, very rarely. So these shells, as this animal grew, it would uh, shed its skin, and we find molts of them. Little head and tail pieces are far more common than whole ones. Uh, in my case, each one of these, each one that I found represents about 45 minutes of hard you know, searching. And that's searching at a place where you know they can be found. There, there are many, many places where you can't find a single one, but there's a few hundred places where you can. Uh, you, you have to know, by reading the rocks, if you can find the little bits and pieces of them, the little tail sections, the head sections, in the rock, you know you're in a good area where they live. Now, I know you don't want to give away your secrets, but where around this area in Greater Cincinnati is a good place to look? You can, again, 
well, the, you can go to Caesar Creek. You can go to Trammell Park. It's a fossil park just dedicated for that. There's places along the Double Way Highway. Um, you can go out on your own. Literally, if you spend enough time, you can go out and find them just about anywhere if you know the clues to identifying their body. You have to know what their body parts look like fragmented to be able to know you're in the right spot to find a whole one. Um, now, I want to ask, when you go to these places, and let's say you make a good find, are you allowed to just take the fossil, well, or would that if, be private? If you, are, if you are in a park, you're not allowed to. You can look at them, take photographs of them. The park policies, they don't let you take them. If you are... If you pull over to the side of a street of a hill cut, hill cuts are superior than, say, creeks because they're not worn down by water. The hill cuts, when they make the roads and they dynamite, take away, remove all the, when they expose all those cliffs, all the jagged limestone and shale rocks, those are wonderful places. And any of the smaller streets, you're not allowed to pull over on a highway, but the smaller roads, it's perfectly fine. It's in the public domain. You can pull over and uh, collect right there. I want to ask Keegan, because you're working on a, a special project, since you're also into fossils. In fact, you have a shirt on that says Cincinnati World Famous for Fossils, drydredgers.org. What kind of uh, drawing do you have there? And just, why don't you hold it up so we can get a shot of it, too. Just pretty much a scene of a late Ordovician scene that would have been in Cincinnati um, with horn coral and brack. Yep. Pods, bryozoans, trilobites, pretty much everything you can find fossilized. And is that a book of pictures then you're, you're working on? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Um, I see something in there that looks like um, one of the fossils you have here on the table. And you have kind of added on so school kids and the rest of us will know what right. it looks like. Um, and I'm referring okay. to this, and I don't know whether we okay. can get a shot of that, but so what is it? What this is, this the gray section is a real uh, cephalopod shell, the gray section, and the, uh, the other ends have been sculpted to show school children, uh, when I present these to uh, the public at libraries and the school programs, what Cincinnati fossils looked like when they were alive. I also have posters, but this sculpture was to show the tentacles uh, when the animal was alive, and it would hunt down the trilobites. And the trilobites, this trilobite is shown with the antenna and the legs, which of course you never find as a fossil, but uh, it just helps helps the children's imagination to see what they looked like when they were alive. You're a member of the Dry Dredgers, as we mentioned, and what kinds of other people belong to the group? It's anybody who has an interest in, if they want to come to, we do monthly lectures where they can hear lectures from usually professional paleontologists on any subject. It might be dinosaurs, it might be trilobites, and we always have uh, a field trip the very next day. Um, so monthly meetings, monthly lectures, and monthly field trips. Uh, and then the lecture, the Field trips are usually within an hour's drive of Cincinnati. We go out to some of the best sites that we know of, and uh, it makes it mu much easier on the public to find very, very big, beautiful uh, fossilized seashells like this, the brachiopods or the snails. Now, obviously, you know a lot because you've been doing it for a long time, but are there any requirements to join the group? Do you have to be an no, expert no, in No, not at all. Matter of fact, I do the beginner's class. So for people who are just coming in and learning about this, I do a 45-minute class just before for people just joining us for the first time. And if people want to get more information, they can go to your website? They can go to drydredgers.org and read all types of introductory material information and our uh, Ad, the address, how to get there, and parking directions and driving directions. And since we've had a limited time here, by joining the organization or going to your website, people can see many more of the fossils that you found right. or right. Uh, potential ones that they could find. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, okay. Greg and Keegan. I've been talking to Greg Courtney and his 12-year-old son, Keegan Courtney, both involved in the Dry Dredgers. Again, more information at drydredgers.org. And I'm Ann Thompson.